<laughs> Play too much. <laughs> Let's see if this works since our weather is so bad today. MBG. Hey, 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 Miss White is in the building. Uh, you sh you sharing this? Thank you. Um, hey, MBG family, I see some of you guys are jumping on. So as you're jumping on, we're just giving time. Hey, Miss Turner, for people to kind of jump on and join us before we get started. So I'm just sharing it on my page and Ronald sharing and doing some other things. And we're just allowing people to jump, jump on, on with us tonight before we get started. Get started. Um, oh, that's cool. What? What is that? They like the background of it when you go to when you pull you click on it. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Let me get situated, guys. And so you guys were a little late jumping on. The weather was a little crazy out here um where we live, and so we were trying to let the lightning and thunder and rain kind of die down a little so we would have an okay um a good enough reception as we jumped on and shared this word on tonight and so i am absolutely excited they really okay. i'm absolutely excited to share <laughs> this word with you guys on tonight if you are on guys drop us a hey how you doing hello feel free to share um this this uh facebook live on your um pages to invite others to come out and get some of this heart surgery that we're going to be doing on tonight we are teaching on a new series that god kind of laid on our hearts called straight out of surgery guys straight and so we're going to be surgery. dealing with just different parts of our bodies that need to be cleansed, that need some surgical attention at times to make us better um, for ourselves and also better for our marriages and our relationships and just better people in general. And so we're going to be delving and digging into um, those things that we need to work on that God, we need to allow God to kind of um, come in and examine and work on in our lives. And tonight we're dealing with the heart. We're going to kick it off pretty much dealing with the heart. And we're probably going to teach on this series for four weeks because we're going to take the two scriptures that we have line for line um it's like four lines but only two scriptures and so we're gonna really delve into it to get a true understanding of mm. what it's about to get a, um to get a true revelation about what we need to do when we ask god to really search our hearts and to help us cleanse our hearts and to um, purify our hearts and make us better. And so um, just as people are joining on, hey, 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 uh, hey, um, Demp, nice to see you here. Hey, Candy Kane, how's my baby doing over there? Um, guys, if you're jumping on, feel free to share it. Again, we have um, our MBG conference coming up on October the, 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 the 14th October the 14th from 10 to 2 if you don't have tickets tickets are still available um we have a couple tickets left and so you can feel free to go ahead and get your tickets to the MBG concert I mean come to my concert like we like not concert um conference and we would yeah. love to see you guys there to get some of this marital relationship uh building of self food that we're going to be giving out at the conference so we would love to see you guys there also guys um you know pay attention to the weather guys you know we just had harvey go through and kind of devastate houston and um the state of texas hey shelly and now we have um irma which is set to come and um, be very possibly very destructive to our family down in um, 
Florida as well as impact us here in Georgia and some other southern states. So you guys just kind of keep your eyes. Um, Eventbrite has closed ticket buying, or maybe it's just me. Um, Tania, I'll check that and see if Eventbrite. It may be maybe I maybe I set a date in there for something that I may have overlooked, and you know I'll go back and definitely look at the dates because I had prior dates set for different things. So I'll go back and look at it tonight and shoot you a uh, inbox to let you know for sure. You know what's going on with Eventbrite, yeah. but um, definitely, guys, if you're having trouble or issues purchasing tickets, just inbox us. You know, get in touch with us, and we'll definitely take a look at it to resolve it. But uh, we are going to jump into this word because Ronna Harris is tired, guys, and he has to wake up to do this word on today because that's what we're called to do. Give this beautiful word that, uh, <laughs> guys, this, this is this is a funny thing. So. I'm going to tell y'all real quick because we keep it 100. So yesterday was Labor Day, guys. And, you know, we were all excited, you know. Hello, can I give my introduction? Hey, everyone. How everybody doing? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, love. No. Um, no, I just wanted to introduce myself because I was just, you know, you just went down on a tangent. I would let you kind of get like, a rest. Hey, everyone. Hello. I mean, you could have did it by yourself. <laughs> Married by Rachel. But, um. Oh, he's a woke guys. Look at him. He's I'm on really top not. of it now. He's on top of it now. No, no but on top of you. But uh, you know. but but so yesterday was Labor Day, guys, and mm. so we hung out yesterday with our family. But prior to hanging out with our family, we were going around, you know, getting the stuff we wanted to go. We were going to do Labor Day at my mom and dad's, and um, with my brothers and their family. So we were just gonna kick it with family. So we had been working on this word, um, heart surgery for. About a week now. Um, and really, 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 really studying it. You know, kind of get it in our spirit. And so we had a test that we drastically failed yesterday. I just, I want to tell y'all, we failed that test so bad. Like, I mean, we failed, guys. I mean, like, if you could get, like, a negative, negative, negative F, that's what we got on that test yesterday. Hey, Sean. And so we were working on this teaching, which you guys going to see about the heart and purifying your heart and letting God kind of just search your heart and work on your heart and know your heart. That's what we're going to be talking about. So we're headed out, going to get the stuff for Labor Day, hanging out together. And out of nowhere, we start arguing about the dumbest, when I tell y'all the most pettiest, dumbest, irrelevant yeah, we thing, we like arguing like somebody done went out and cheated, guys. That's how heated our argument got. And it was crazy because typically when we have arguments, somebody's like, okay, dude, you tripping. Like, I mean, somebody is Christ-like um, in it. Somebody could kind of reel us back in. But when I tell you, we got played yesterday. Like, me and Ronda got super-duper played by the enemy. And he was like, pretty much, y'all ain't ready to teach this word you over here talking about because God ain't searching none of y'all hearts right now. Like, you just, you ain't got no control of your mouth. You just, everybody in their feelings. You feeling offended. You getting defensive. You just saying stuff you don't mean. It got like, uh. And let me tell y'all how we knew it got, like, really, really out of pocket. Like, our, our argument, like, was like a shot. Our kids was like in the truck, y'all. Our kids was in the car. And typically, we got four boys. So typically, they like super loud, y'all. They like, ah, aggravate everybody just on 10. When I tell y'all, you could have heard a pin drop in that car. A pin drop on the carpet. Yes, you could have heard the pin drop, the silence that was in the car. Because the kids were just like, oh, wow, these dudes, they, they like really arguing. Like, we ain't too used to seeing mom and dad kind of really like, and nobody backing down. Like, and they were just watching. And so we was so like, God, it, I'm talking, it was crazy because at no point did we really step back and say, oh, wait a minute. This is something else. This is because it was so petty. Like, it was so petty. So then we get to my mom's house. Everybody can kind of tell. We kind of like, you know, we ain't like how we usually be. And so my brother, he's going to bust out and say, Oh, I guess the anniversary over. Because, you know, our anniversary is crazy, guy. Our anniversary is just Saturday. Like, so, I and my brother was like, I guess the anniversary has passed. And we just bust out laughing, like, because clearly we was, like, hot. But once we got to my mom's house, we kind of, you know, figured things out and settled. And, you know, we got back cool. And we reflected on it later. And we were like, 
dude, we just got played, like for yeah. real play. Like we, we, we just got so in our feelings and so immature and so petty that we couldn't even reel in a argument that was dumb. Like it well, I was, think, I think the thing is, um, I mean, we have arguments. Yeah, we do. But it's a different type of argument when um, you realize at the end of the day you've been played by the devil. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, this is normal. Yeah. It, this is life. Everybody yeah. have arguments. Yeah. And I know a lot of people see our relationships like, oh, they don't argue. They don't do anything. No, yeah. we do have arguments. We have real blow-ups. Mm -hmm. And yesterday was one of the real blow-ups over, yeah. over nothing. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. What's it up, was, Stevenson? It was quite crazy. So, I wanted to share that before we went into this heart surgery teaching because even though we uh study the word you know and we're working on being better and we're doing all these things we can easily get played by our feelings our emotions things can easily get out of control in a marriage or a relationship you can easily lose mm -hmm. control of your tongue of your feelings of your actions and so we always have to be aware self-awareness we always have to be aware of what's going on with us and we always have to come back to the table and say you know what wait a minute wait a minute that had got real out of hand where did that come from where did that stem from because neither of us had a real attitude like we were cool happy excited we're gonna go hang out for labor day and it just went like from the store to the car it got real crazy like mm -hmm. you know so we knew we got played but we also knew that a lot of times people don't realize when you move and shake together as a couple that the enemy attacks you a lot of time because when you're unified you can get so much done and God can use you in so many ways when you're unified but if the enemy comes in and divides yeah. the covenant you will get nothing done. Like, you can easily say, well, you know what? Uh, we're not going to do that because I'm mad at him and he's not talking to me. I'm not talking to him. And we're not going to let God use us today because our emotions have gotten in the way of being used. And so you always got to be mindful when you get into a marriage or you get into a relationship that's headed towards marriage that it, it has now become a little bigger than you. Yeah. And you got to work really to reel in arguments and normal things that happen so they don't linger and go farther. But we're going to jump into this word. I just wanted to give y'all that backdrop to yesterday and that was just it was it was amazing to see it just roll out. So tonight we're going to be talking about heart surgery. Heart Straight surgery? Out of heart surgery. Yeah, not out of Compton. We kind of stole their thing, but you know, it's all good. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about straight out <laughs> of surgery. Yeah. Heart surgery as that is. Yeah. You know. And you know, it's going to be interesting. It is, guys. I'm a um Trying to prepare for this hurricane. Oh, yeah. We were just talking about that, Raymond, yeah. um, at the beginning. Definitely um, people that are in the path to get ready and make sure that you're prepared um, for, for the storm that can potentially come and do some serious damage in Florida and some of those southern states. So we hope you and your family stay safe. So if you guys are in the path of the hurricane, man, you know, we pray that you guys are safe. Mm -hmm. We pray that, you know, this um, this hurricane turn around. Yeah. You know, could God have the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. And so we're just going to be praying to that, redirect that happen, it. To redirect the, uh, because anytime somebody can calm the storm, it can definitely uh, calm the hurricane. So Absolutely. just keep that in mind. God mm -hmm. is in control. Yeah. Of all things. So we're going to, we won't be before you long. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about, you know, Heart surgery. Heart surgery. So, guys, I'm going to give you the scripture the real scripture quick. of... No, go ahead. I don't have time to play with you no, today. No, like, go Seriously. ahead, love. Go ahead. No, no, no. Ladies first. Really? No. Since you want to, you know, <laughs> tell everything, you want to be the first one to say it. Hey, go ahead. See, no, I'm no, going to no, go with you today. Go ahead. No, go serious. I'm, I'm dead serious. So, you play too much. I was focused and I was trying to get us... We had a timeline. I'm trying to okay. get us done. I'm, so, I'm not Psalms playing. 139, 23 through 24 says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there is any wicked or hurtful way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. Like I said before we started this um, live, we're going to be dealing with line by line. So the only line we're dealing with tonight is the very first line that says, search me, me O God, God and know my, my heart. heart. Now, the first part, search me, the Amplified Bible has, like, in brackets, thoroughly. Like, so, search me thoroughly, oh God, well, I mean, and know if, my heart. Even when you look at the Webster Dictionary of search, search um, me to look for some thoroughly. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, a lot of times you ask your kids, hey, go look for my shoes. Go mm -hmm. look for my shoes. Mm -hmm. And they'll just go scan the room. Uh -huh. And they say, I don't see it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what caused, that, that was what we call 
we looking for it. Mm-hmm. So if you're looking for your keys, you're like, oh, where my keys at? Mm-hmm. You just, you know, you look around and say, oh, I don't see it. Yeah. So you look for it. Yeah. But when you really put on a search mm-hmm. is when you lose your child. Mm-hmm. Or if you lose your keys and you have to go somewhere. Yeah. Oh, you're searching you for start, that. you know, pulling up on the bed. <laughs> yes. You know, look up. I mean, you start looking at crazy places that yes. you know. Your keys are not. Would not be. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You look behind the mirror on the wall. Yes. Yes, I it mean, is. So that's really thoroughly searching. Like you go from wall to wall, you know, from the roof. To mm-hmm. the basement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what we call searching. Yeah, to dig deep, to examine, to thoroughly look, really look with a microscope is what David is saying mm-hmm. in this scripture. Search me, God, and know my heart. Search me and know my heart. Search me and know my heart. And I think a lot of things come with searching. Yeah. So this is going to be the interesting part about when David asks God yeah. to search his heart. Yeah. Because in the physical, when we think about search, we like, you know, see what's wrong, you know. You know we look at surface level. Surface level. Mm-hmm. But what he's saying here is, hey, hey, Melissa. he wants you to dig deep, mm-hmm. pull all the things, search my heart. Mm-hmm. So we just said, when you search something, it's from top to bottom, from yeah. left to right, all around, yeah. everything that is within the heart. Yeah. So do you really want God to search your heart? Mm. Because this is where we keep all the... The, the, the strands of life. Yeah. All the, because they said in the Bible, it talks about the heart being the deceitful. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Being, the deceitful. Heart, mm-hmm. being deceitful. Being mm-hmm. deceitful. So this is where we stir up all the, and, and and before we go into this, the world is so messed up because mm-hmm. we like start saying. saying stuff that don't make no sense. Yeah. And I'm just going to give you one line. People say, follow the heart. Mm-hmm. Follow the heart. We just got in a, uh, uh, a trend of just saying, girl, follow your heart. Follow your heart, follow your girl. Heart. So you tell me you want to follow one of the most deceitful things in your body. Yes. That's what you're telling me. Yes. Okay. Yes. So let's go back to... Before you, de- before you delve into that, love, I was putting the scripture up there. I, I, I want, before you delve into I want to say this. So we all know that everybody has a heart. I know a lot of times we hear people say, they don't got no heart. They just so heartless. Everybody has a heart. Now, the condition in which everybody's heart is in varies, right? So Mm -hmm. everybody has a heart, but the state of your heart varies. Now, when you get in a marriage or a relationship, everybody brings their heart to the marriage or relationship. Now, if your heart is toxic, You bring your toxic heart to the relationship. If your heart is healthy, you bring your healthy heart to the relationship. If your heart is broken, you bring your broken heart to the relationship. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times where you find friction and tension and and, uh, and years of issues in marriages and relationships, it stems from a heart problem. It stems from that piece that Ronald's about to delve into where there's no searching being done to know the heart. That it's, things have been buried so deep that we now want to not deal with it, forget about it, act as if it doesn't exist. But our lives are a reflection of the disease that is there within our heart. And we're feeling all these symptoms yeah. in our marriage and our relationship that impact it negatively. But we don't want to take it to the doctor. That is God to say, search me, oh God, and know my heart. Well, I can understand why people don't want to take um, take their heart to God and say, search me, oh heart. Yeah. Search my heart. Because when you ask God to search your heart, with searching come exposure. Oh, say so, that. Come on, I ain't got time. I'm just trying to, if you ain't said a word, that is a word. Yes. Searching really? leads to exposure. We're going to touch about that later. I'm going I'm to let you ride it. But, I, I mean, yeah. No, that, how about it. I just let you ride it? No, 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 no. Because that's no, further no. down my teaching. Like, I ain't got it. it no, like, we're together. I want to let you ride it. <laughs> you ride it. Why you got to keep saying you ride it? Like, why you always oh, got to go, like, left field with your comments? Like, I know what you're getting at. Like, I'm not riding nothing. We having this conversation. <laughs> no, you said, I'm going to let you ride it. So, I'm like, oh no, my you God. Ride it. Oh, my God. But, no, we, you know, I'm just making a point. So, what I'm going to do is yeah. I'm going to touch on a few points and I'm going to let her ride it. Uh, and so, I mean, you, you know, I'm going to let her read off her Teach. notes. Uh, yes, thank you. And so, <laughs> and so um, man, you throwing me out. Uh, no, you threw yourself out. <laughs> um, <laughs> you see see how you do? 
Oh, exposure. He was talking about exposure. Mm-hmm. When you ask God to search your yes, heart, sure. what happens is that means you want to be exposed. Mm. What happens is even when you go into a relationship, most people don't want to expose your heart. Yeah. Your heart is one of the things that most people going into a relationship try to protect. Yeah. And a lot of times we build a wall mm-hmm. on our heart, mm-hmm. you know, because that's the last thing that, and it's, it's crazy because we can sleep with somebody, but we won't get them out of heart. Mm. How could you lay next to someone? Mm. But naked, then... but not truly naked. That's another story. That's another teaching. Come on. Now, I, I'm just, no, but you, that's, that's the truth. Because you said, how can you lay next to somebody yeah. to that capacity and not, not expose, expose your heart? heart. Like, so you would, you would expose yourself. Mm-hmm. Which is the value mm-hmm. of what you have yeah. versus exposing your heart. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. don't understand it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Most need a heart transplant. Guys, let me let me let me let me say this. So the search, because some people just jumped on. So we're coming out of Psalms 139 verses 23 through 24. And we're de- dealing with just the first line. We're gonna take this line by Which line. Is, for search each me, week. oh God. Uh-huh. And know my and know my heart so the first point that um i don't know if me and ronald cleared up in the beginning is that god's search is not for god god's search is for you You. god already knows our heart and so when we say search me oh god and know my heart it isn't for god's revelation it's for god to give us the revelation so that's where the exposure come in absolutely so it basically like he take your heart you say search me oh god search me oh god Mm -hmm. so he basically take your heart and put it in front of you Mm -hmm. and so you have to be faced with all the issues of your heart because this is where we bury most of our pain. This is where we bury most of our brokenness. Mm-hmm. This is where we bury most of the um, most of the issues of life that we go through. Absolutely. This is where we bury them. Absolutely. In our heart. Mm-hmm. So out of the heart flows the issues of life. Yeah. And so you start to bury all of that. You know, you bottle all that stuff up, and then you go into a relationship. Yep. So yep. basically what we're saying is have the heart surgery yep. before you go into your next relationship, Absolutely. before you go into your next marriage. Absolutely. Absolutely. So point one, guys, for God to search your heart, it has to be accessible to him. For God to search your heart, it, it has, has to, to be, be accessible to him. So think about it. A lot of times we all, most of us travel, and if you travel in the airport, typically TSA, I believe they're called, does a search. And TSA does a search based upon your willingness to be searched. They typically don't just come and pat you down in the street unless you're coming forward to say, I'm willing to be searched so that I can have access to what's beyond this point, right? Beyond this And so, yeah. And so we come in. And that's pretty much how God works. You have to make your heart accessible to God. That's Mm. why it says, search me, oh God, and know my heart. That's an invitation for God to come in and search. You have to be willing to be accessible for the search to happen. Now, what we typically see, most of us aren't willing to be searched. because, and, And you will find that most people that aren't willing to have searches conducted on them have things that they don't want revealed. They're carrying things that they know are toxic, can um, are, shouldn't be there, um, things that are not going to be allowed past that point. They are carrying those things mm-hmm. and they're like, nah, you know what? I don't want you to search me. You know, nah, that's okay. But you got every right to refuse a search. Yes, you do. You have every right to refuse a search. But understand, refusal of a search is refusal to go beyond that access point. So a lot of times what we find now in our marriages and our relationships, we want our marriages to go higher. We want our marriages to be better. We want our marriages to live it out on another level. But what we're saying is, God, I want to experience this supernatural marriage, but I'm not willing. I'm not willing to be searched to have that access to that level. We just want to go through the checkpoint without being searched. And God does not work that way. God will not give you access to another level if you're not purified to go to that level. It's the same thing with TSA in the airport. If you're not ready to be searched, you mm-hmm. will not have access beyond that point. You will have to turn around going about your business. Or you can say, you know what? Search me. And when TSA searches you and they find things that are not allowed beyond that point, what do they do? They take your stuff. 
Like, guys, I went and visited my sister in New York, and we were just shopping, shopping. I'm like, yeah, I'll take this back. I'll do this. Buying this beauty supply stuff, I had totally slipped my mind that there, that you could only take a certain amount, like certain ounces of stuff um, with you. And I had all this stuff, like, in a carry-on bag. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to take it back. I got to the checkpoint. They said, no, you know, you can't, you can't take this. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, well, what are y'all going to do with it? They put it to the side. Of course, my stuff is it's brand new. Brand new stuff I could not take with me. Now, I could have said, you know what? No, I want to keep my stuff. I got to figure out another way. But I wouldn't have been able to move beyond that point. So I gave it up. Some of us are holding toxic things in our heart that we need to give up. That we need to give up. To get up. beyond the checkpoint. Your refusal to check your heart to God. Your refusal to cleanse your heart. Your refusal to give up those things that are killing your marriage, your relationship, your life. It's preventing you to go back beyond that access point. That's true. And God wants to take your marriage and your relationship higher, but your refusal to Search me, oh God, and know my heart is preventing your access. And basically what happens is this is the way that it goes. When you walk into the checkpoint and you ask God to search your heart, yeah. he takes his meter and it says, boop, yeah. heart and heart. <laughs> boop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's selfishness. You oh need to leave that. God. That's selfishness. Yes. Because, you know, every time it swipes by, it makes a sound. Yes, that lets you know something's there. Something is there. So it goes, Yes, boop. yes. Oh, yeah. No, no, you're too selfish. You yeah. Need Remove that from your heart. Boop. Yeah. That forgiveness that you didn't forgive mm. your sister or your brother, mm. yeah, you need to get rid yeah. of that. Mm -hmm. Boop. When you and your husband was riding in the car oh and you got God. mad yesterday, mm. I was talking about you. Mm. I, I, I'll take it. I wasn't okay. ready yesterday, but I'm ready today. I can I can, I can admit hey, that. She went Miss MBG yesterday. Well, no, I, I gave my confession. Like, <laughs> And I would tell her, search the old, search the old. <laughs> really bad. <babe. laughs> I said, man, what happened to God searching your heart? <laughs> man, I, mean, I said, this ain't a God moment, y'all. I mean, we had completely went left field in that argument. You can like, forget about MBG. Oh, yesterday. my God. And it happens. And it happens. It happens. And it in happens. that moment, if we were to stay in that moment, like in our marriage for a long time, imagine the access, the accessible things that wouldn't be accessible to us. Right. Like, we wouldn't be able to get on here and do this teaching if we decide to stay in a place where we don't want to allow God to cleanse our heart and deal mm -hmm. with what we need to deal with. Yeah. Like, that's pretty much on what what's happening. And it's crazy that, you know, I was I was studying the word, but God, it's amazing how God just revealed things to you. So I was cooking the other day. I was cooking a roast, and I was cutting up my onions. So as I was cutting up my onions, you know, you take the little top layer of the onion off. Mm -hmm. That's the one you don't do nothing with. It's just the skin covering of it. Yeah. And so my onion was looking good. It was a nice, juicy, wonderful onion. And so I start chopping my onions up to go on my roast. And as I, I'm chopping the onion, I look at it and a couple of layers down into my onion, it's rotten. Now, the outer parts, I want to say maybe four layers up, the onion is perfect. Like nothing on okay. those parts. But once I go about four layers down, it's browning. It's a little rottenness there. You know, it's, it's diseased right there. That is how our hearts are. Everybody's heart's like that. Everybody's heart's like that. We have parts in our hearts that we have buried so deep that on the outside, yeah, that's good. we look good. On the outside, we look like believers. On the outside, we look like godly people. On the outside, we look kind. On the outside, we look loving. On the outside, we look forgiving. But if somebody was to peel back a couple of layers, put you in a situation where things are a little tough, put you in a situation that's pulling at your patience over and over mm -hmm. again, and we will get down to where the infection is because the layers only cover up as long as they're there. Once people start digging yeah. and removing and see why it comes out in marriages and relationships, because we are naturally put together to peel back each other's layers. That's what, that's where growth comes in at. Mm -hmm. We are naturally there y'all to peel back each other's layers. That's what we're there for to reveal what needs to be done within each of us to grow what God still needs to touch. And a lot of times we want to just cover up, cover up, cover up. And as long as you're covering up, it can look good. 
But you have to become vulnerable. Like Ronald said, you got to expose it. Yeah. Once I exposed this onion I was chopping up, I'm like, wait a minute. This isn't this isn't 100% pure and healthy like I thought it was. So let me ask you this. So as you were chopping the onions, so did you did some of it drop in? Like no, it, I, was, oh. I was chopping it on a cutting board. Oh, okay. Dude, was, you, if you ate it, you already ate like... God, like he did that, you know, you pray I mean, on your food. He had, if a little droplet, a little rotten part got in there, you, you're good. You're still living and breathing and, you know. So let's get back. <laughs> I like that part where you saying peel back. Yes. Peel back. Yeah. Likewise, when you are in your room, mm -hmm. you need to peel back. I, I can't. Peel I'm back. not even going to go. I'm not going there with you. Okay, let's go back. <laughs> No, because that's what the anointing takes place. Oh, my but go God. Ahead. Go ahead. So we're going to go ahead and hit the point. Yeah, um, so for point one, for God to search your heart, it has to be accessible to him, guys. you got to make your heart accessible to God. God has to be able to search it. You have to make it accessible to God. It is useless to ask God to search your heart and lock your heart against his searching. <laughs> that, is, that is useless, guys. To say, search my heart. But wait a minute, wait a minute, God. Let me just, I'm going to give you a piece of the surgery. Like, search this part right here that I know is popping, Lord. It, it's perfect. Like, search this top layer of my heart. But oh, don't yeah. dig too deep in my pain. Because you know what that top layer does? Mm. It says, look, I go to church on Sunday. Come on now. I praise the Lord. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I love my fellow brethren Come and sisters. You know, I'm a good person. Yeah, I yeah. do good at work. Uh -huh. But once you start peeling mm -hmm. and let somebody cross that line. Yeah. All hell break loose. Yeah. Like literally all hell break loose. Yeah, it does. And, so, and I, I want to jump real quick to this question, babe, because I meant to say something when we were talking earlier, but it kind of passed by. But so Jamal says, so what if your spouse isn't willing to open their heart to the signs of a positive future? So what if your spouse is not willing to open their heart to a positive future? Um, I would say the first thing, of course, we're going to say prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, we're gonna keep praying. You're gonna continue to pray for your spouse, but I think what you have to do is um, to try to penetrate it mm -hmm. and to dig deep to get to the core, because like you were just saying, it's different layers. It's different layers, and so what you have to start doing is you have to start peeling back those layers, mm -hmm. getting down to where that infection is. Yeah. Because if you don't deal with the infection, you're gonna to begin to grow. Yeah. And so once you get, it's like the core of the apple. Once you slice it. All the peeling, go through all the peeling. Once you get to the middle, you have that core piece where the seed is. That's going to be the root, and that's the part that you have to get to. Mm -hmm. But I, and, I, and I'll say this, because this whole teaching is to focus inward. And a lot of times in marriage, what we do is cool. we hear a teaching, and we automatically assume and point to our spouse as the person that is suffering in that area. So today we're talking about surgery, heart surgery, individual surgery, our surgery. And so yeah. what I would say in a situation like that, that's already looming, that comes back to search me, oh God, and know my heart. Because possibly, just open your mind to it, is there something within your heart that feeds that mentality within her? Is there something yeah. within your heart that you don't know is there that's coming out in your marriage that's fueling that mindset that's a barrier to God shifting and changing that yeah. mindset? Yeah. And so what I will say first is to focus inward. Like ask God, God reveal to me my heart. Reveal to me my heart about our future. Reveal mm -hmm. to me my heart about my wife. Like, is there anything I'm harboring, I'm storing that is festering within my heart that does not need to be there, that is toxic to my marriage, yeah. and it's impacting me in a negative way? That's what we got to do, guys. Because what most of us do, and this is how the heart works, and this is how marriage and relationship work. You see marriages and relationships that are suffering. Like, we getting into it every day. I mean, we're going at it. Like, it's a problem every day. Now, think about it. If you have a headache that pops up out of nowhere, and let's say this headache goes on for about five days, and you're like, man, I just can't. I don't know where this headache came from. You didn't do anything out the box, you know, anything dramatic, drastic. But this headache is there. And you're like, man, I just can't, I just can't pinpoint where this headache might be coming from, but I know it's coming from somewhere. When that headache becomes mm 
-hmm. enough of an issue for you, what we typically do is when we can't self-medicate it anymore and we can't fix it, we go to a doctor. Now, what the doctor says is, well, tell me some of the symptoms you've been having that brought you here today. So we ran out. Well, you know, I've been having a headache. Okay, what you been doing? Eating. They go through a little bit of what's going on mm -hmm. with you, you know, circumstances to try to see if they can tie it to something. Now, if they can't tie your headache, your chronic headache to something, then they say, okay, maybe we need to dig a little deeper. We might need to examine you a little further. We might need to run some tests that are a little more in depth to see if there's something inside that we can't see with the physical eye that's ailing you, that's causing you to have these symptoms. Yeah. That is what God wants to do with your marriage and your relationship. When you are having issue after issue after issue in your marriage or your relationship, there is a problem there that you cannot see with the physical eye. Well, uh, and, and not to go against what you're saying, mm -hmm. but on the other hand, I think a lot of times we know what the issue is. Oh, absolutely. So you know if the person is not right for you. You know if the person is uh, cheating on you. You know if it's something mm -hmm. that is not there. Mm -hmm. Likewise, if you continue to keep having a headache and you know you eat donuts every day, you don't work out, and you eat cookies and stuff at night, of course, we're going to be looking at diabetes. Mm -hmm. We're going to be looking at all kind of, you know, that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Or if you bang your head up against the wall, you know if you hit your head earlier today. Or, you know, you can feel things when they're not Absolutely. right. Absolutely. But what we choose to do is to ignore mm -hmm. the fact that what has taken place. Yeah. Uh, we ignore the red flags. Yeah. Um, you know, from day one, most of the time, if a person not really good for you, you know, because some, some, some um, relationships start off if the, 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 the spouse is not giving you the respect because you don't have to force someone to respect you. Mm -hmm. When someone is for you, that person is going to respect you automatically. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, even if you have some hiccups at the core of who they are, yeah. they respect you. Yeah. Like, I mean, that that is so very true to learn how to put God in and the family friends out. Of. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that 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 becomes that becomes the root of everything. And you were just talking about the um, self awareness. So another point is the importance of self awareness in the examination process. Yeah. A lot of times, like you said, there are things that we are aware of about ourselves that we have stored within our hearts, but because we don't want to deal with it, we mm -hmm. have become like awesome diggers. Yeah, because we don't want to deal with the aftermath. Mm -hmm. So the aftermath could be being alone. Uh huh. The aftermath can be confronting the issues and the outcome is not what you want it to be. Absolutely. So it's like somebody, you can know someone cheating on you, mm -hmm. but for the simple fact, you don't want to face the fact that, you know, you're going to have to either leave this person or stay and deal with the situation. Yep. So you would rather just turn the eye on it. Yep. Instead of dealing with it and facing it or either just letting it go. Yeah. Yeah. Because and you feel like you can't get someone else. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And and steam, you know, low stuff is steam going to play an issue mm -hmm. in it as well. Mm -hmm. And what a lot of people typically do is we don't ask God to search us for revelation. We ask God to search us for confirmation. And let me tell you about asking God to search you for confirmation, guys. So God's search is not for your confirmation. Let's be very clear. His search is not to confirm our self-assessment. And a lot of times we self-assess mm -hmm. and we self-assess on the high end. Like you ever had to do um, reviews on yourself before your uh, job did like a performance evaluation? They ask you, evaluate, like rate yourself, girl, rate yourself, tell me what you think about yourself. You know, and Ooh. typically... I'm not about to shoot myself down if the scale is one to five. I'm, 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 I'm rolling like with four and five, y'all. I'm, I'm giving it high. Like, so I'm not about to rate myself at a low point. Most of the time, nobody does that. Now, even if you know you might deserve a one, you're like, well, I, you know, I, I fall in the middle. I give myself a three. Our self-assessment isn't what God uses to assess our hearts, to, to really scan and scope our hearts. And so when you go in it with, well, yeah, you know what, God? 
I, I know I got an attitude problem. Like, that's something I absolutely know I got. I know I got to work on my attitude. And I can be a little jealous sometimes, but them the only two things I got, Lord. Like, I know for a fact I'm rocking on everything else. The only things I need to work on is my attitude, God, you know what I'm saying, and my jealousy sometimes. So all I need you to do, God, is search my heart and confirm what I found. Like, let me know that this is me. Like, because cause I know, God, that's all I got. Yeah. And that's how we go to God. And that's not being accessible. That's not being honest. And that's not being being open to God's assessment. Because remember, God does not search our hearts for his revelation. He already knows our heart. Yeah. He searches our heart to give us the revelation. And so if you come into the table with your revelation, you are already disputing any possibility of God telling you what you need to work on. Because you already turned a deaf ear to it. Because you know who you are. You know what you got in your heart. Like God now, God said, okay, you know what? Yeah, you got, you got some anger issues. You got a little jealousy going on. And you know... You got some hate that you need to work on. You're like, what? wait a minute, hate? God, you going to say I'm hateful? Like, is, God, do you not know I serve on the usher board every Sunday? Mm -hmm. Like, do you not know that I give, like, to the needy? Hate God? Like, really got hate? And we'll get so offended. Yeah. So offended by what God is trying to tell us and purify within us before it becomes even more toxic to our lives. And all the while we're fighting God on what he's saying, our relationships and our marriages are showing the symptoms of what he is exposing to us. I mean, nobody want to hear the truth. That's it. Yeah, I mean, That's a hard pill to swallow. Yeah. A hard pill to swallow. But like you said, if you come into God and you're saying, search me, oh God, know my heart, you got to be ready for exposure. Yeah. You got to be ready for exposure. And I think me and you talked about it. Let me find in my notes, guys. Oh, we talked about exposure. And it said one of the points was God doesn't search us to search us. His search always leads to exposure. But now this is the problem with exposure. So when you are not ready for exposure... Mm -hmm. From God's search of your heart, let me tell you what happened. The three D's happened? happened. The three D's. You get the three D's. The three D's. What? Three D's when you're not ready to be exposed by God from the search. You get denial. Denial. You get defensiveness. And you get disregard. I'm going to give it to you again. So when God searches your heart, you denial. say, search me, oh God. Know my heart. Tell me what's wrong with me. Tell me what I'm burying. Tell me what I need to work on. And God tells you and exposes these things to you if you are not ready to receive what God is saying and you're not ready for the exposure you're going to get the three D's you're going to get into denial mm -hmm. you're going to get defensive yep. and you're going to disregard what he says and in all those things stops the growth and all those things stops the access like we were talking about and all those things you continue to walk around with heart problems but when you have somebody who is ready for exposure, then you get the three A's. Like, so now if I'm saying, God, search my heart, right? Know my heart. Tell me, tell me about myself, God. I'm ready mm -hmm. to receive it. Like, give it to me. I want to change. I want to be better. I'm open to what you will see in my heart that I can't see for myself or that I'm in denial about. When you're ready for God's exposure about your heart, you get awareness, you get acknowledgement, and okay. you get accountability. I'm going to give it to you again. When you're, a, when you're ready for God's exposure, you're going to get awareness. Okay. You're going to get acknowledgement. So God's going to reveal it to you. That's going to be your awareness. You're like, oh, wow, God, I didn't, I didn't even realize that I had that within me. But I can, definitely, I can definitely see it. Because once God makes you aware of it, you will acknowledge it because you begin to line up with God. And you know that God knows your heart. He knows us better than we know ourselves. So you'll begin to be like, you know what, God? You are absolutely right. You, you're right, God. I got to acknowledge what you found within me. And I got to acknowledge it because the symptoms line up with what you're telling me the heart problem is. And after you get that acknowledgement, you get the accountability. Because now that I'm aware and I've acknowledged what is wrong in my heart, right. I got to be accountable for it. Like, I got to change it. I got to do the work. I got to own it. I got to be the person that says, you know what? I got an anger issue. And my anger is affecting my marriage negatively. My anger is affecting my relationships negatively. I got to work on that. But one of the D's is when you are exposed to that, 
that you get on the defense and say, oh, the reason why I got an anger problem is when she do this. Yes. That's what make me angry. Yep. Or when he do this, that's the only time I get mad when he yep. do something stupid like this right yep. here. Yep. So we got to stop, you know, justifying the, the, um, the anger yes. or whatever the exposure is. Yes. Stop justifying the exposure. Yes. When you have asked God to search your heart. Yes. Because we said out of searching comes exposure. Yes. And once you expose, you have to go through the process of dealing with what has God has expo- um, exposed to you. Revealed to you. Yeah, Revealed absolutely. You. Absolutely. I'm just typing in, guys, some of these stuff we was talking about. So you can have it. But, yeah, I mean, that's absolutely the truth because... Truly, if you ask God to search your heart in all honesty and sincerity, God is going to always bring you back something you wasn't aware of. I guarantee you. Yeah. If you ask God, guys, and, and, and this is not for you guys. This is just for us. We were just talking about mm-hmm. this. Like, I've been on, since he gave us this word, I've been on search me, oh God, and know my heart. And some of the things he's revealed to me about my heart, I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's not me, God. That's See, she's been on That's search. <laughs> she's been on search me, search my heart. I've been like, you know, can you look, get this side first? <laughs> get the good side she been saying search the whole oh thing. Oh, my God. But I've been like, you know. Just the little piece right little here. Piece right there. <laughs> Check that little piece right there. That's the good side of me right there. Oh, and we call those what? Partial searches. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, when you allow partial searches, you're going to get partial result, yeah. results. Yeah, you're you going to get you partial do. Access, yeah. like you're not gonna get total access if you're not willing to to to, uh, to make yourself totally accessible. But like yeah. honestly, that's hard. Like yeah. guys, everybody has something within them. Like mm-hmm. even think about it. We go to the doctor and get annual regular checkups yeah. to ensure that our bodies are healthy. We go get these checkups whether you have symptoms or not because you want to make sure you can catch something before. before it begins to affect your body negatively. Now, God wants us to do the same thing with our hearts that are closely tied to God. Like the word said God looks at the heart Man looks at the Uh, outward appearance. Mm -hmm. And so we're caught up so much in the world that we're looking at the outward and we ain't taking no consideration of the heart. We like, wait a minute. Yeah, I mean, he's fine. Like, you don't see him? Like, he got a nice car. He got a nice house. Oh, my God. He is just, like, so attractive. Mm -hmm. And he's smart. Like, we go through all these things that have no true, no true impact on a lasting marriage, on a lasting mm-hmm. journey of a marriage. Because you can get Mr. Fine as wine with a toxic heart. Yeah. And you're going to get hell. Yeah. But he could be all of that and he beat you. Yep. Because he have anger in his heart. Come on now. And then you'll start justifying like, girl, he didn't hit me. I ran to his hand. I mean, hand. I kind of provoked him. What? Like, what? <laughs> Attractive lies. <now. laughs> Attractive lives do matter. Oh, my God, my friend. Yes. No, but I, I say that to say that some of us only look for that. Like, some of us, we don't care what type. We, we just had this conversation with our 22-year-old daughter, guys, who just came back home after life and beat up a little bit. So she coming back home to get a spirit fed, and so we're feeding the spirit. But we're talking to her about relationships that she has had. Mm -hmm. And as we're digging, talking about past relationships and what you are looking forward to and what you're looking to have, we're getting her to realize, dude, your your heart is toxic. Like, you got so much toxicity Mm -hmm. in your heart that naturally... If you get in a relationship, it's going to bleed onto Mm -hmm. your spouse. It's going to affect them. And... A lot of times, even when you think about searches that are conducted by the TSA, that search isn't just for you. That search is to protect those around you, yeah. protect those yeah. connected to you. It's the very same thing when you look at purifying your heart for your spouse. Me having a good heart makes me a good person. 
Me having a good heart makes me a, a good wife. Me having a good heart makes me a good mom. It makes me a good sister. It makes me a good friend. It makes me a good coworker. It makes me a good everything that is attached to me. And so when God searches your heart, the search is not just from you, from, for you. Yeah. You don't get to just reap the benefits. The benefits are for those around you that also have relationship and ties to you. And that's why it's important to do the, the self-work. And so many times in marriage and relationship, we don't want to do the self-work. We want to do the directed work. Like, oh, nah, he need to, he, he need to work on his heart. Come on, my heart's straight. Yeah. Nah, he need to work on him. And then we could get better. And that's that's typically not the case. <laughs> and and just, it, it reminded me of yesterday because this is what she told me yesterday. <laughs> that I need to work on my heart. <sighs> After we got into a big little <sighs> argument... <laughs> She, my wife told me I need to work on my heart. So I thought that was real funny, though. I did. I did. I did tell him you need to work on your heart, guys. I mean, and let me tell you. Let me tell you how petty it get, guys. Because cause we keep it 100. Let me tell you how petty it get. So we studying, working on this word. So Ronald takes the word and does like the Christian people do, guys. He like try to beat you down with the word and use the word against you. No. But you said, oh, but that ain't your prayer no more. But you just doing all this praying all week. Oh, God, search my heart. I guess he ain't searching your heart now. I'm like, dude, wait a minute. Like, no. I ain't say that. He was like, oh, so you ain't searching. I was like, you know what? Nah, he's not searching my heart right now. We ain't talking about no searching no heart. I don't even know what that's about. But you it know, got real left there because you, know, you get defensive naturally. That's one of the three Ds here. <laughs> yeah, it did. It did. It absolutely did. So, I'm not. I'm not lying about it. But so, so it did in yours as well. Because then you didn't want to hear nothing I was saying. I know, but we ain't talking about me right now. Oh no, we talking about us. We Let's be clear. Pastors. This is this is one. We, we talking about, about us. Pastors. We talking about us. I'm the center of the relationship. <laughs> no, don't do that. We both centers. Don't do <laughs> that. Don't do pastor. that. <laughs> you know, this is the anointed one in the relationship. I can't with I'm you. I'm just a. I'm just a sinner who saved really by bad. grace. That's all I am. Really bad. No, I am. But anyway. I'm going to keep my comment to myself. Oh, let's fight on the scope then. <laughs> let's do this. You don't make me none. <laughs> <Can't stop. laughs> but no, but you know, one of the things that I pulled out, mm. when you really want to see your Christianity challenge, oh. it's not challenge when everything is going good. Absolutely. It's not challenge when, you know, the God is blessing you. It's not challenge mm -hmm. when... You know, you get a promotion on your job. It's not challenged when you're in church and, you know, the pastor is saying something good and you're shouting and you're speaking in tongues. Yeah, it's not challenged at that point. Yep. Let life happen. Mm -hmm. Be about to lose your house. Be about to lose your car. Mm. Be about to lose your marriage. Yeah, yeah. Be about to, you know, be on the sick bed. Yeah. Or, break it just simple, or be in a situation where it's heated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then that that's where your Christianity your Christ-like characteristic mm -hmm. is challenged at that Absolutely. point. Absolutely. Now, or can you show uh, humility mm. in a situation mm -hmm. where someone has just stepped on your foot? Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about physically stepping on your foot. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about stepping on your emotions. Yeah. Yeah. So what then you do? Yeah. Because, you know, one of the things that start running through your mind, you're not going to be a pushover. You're not yeah. going to let somebody talk to you any kind of way. No, you're not going to let it go. You yep. got to get the last word. Yep. But like, you just try to handle me, too? Like, no. Yeah. That, I mean, that's how we get. And truly, that's just natural. For it's, natural so, it's, yeah. it's a natural yeah. response. And that's why you got to really work on um, looking at yourself. Because yeah. we all can get there. We all can get to a place. And I want to say this because I've, I I see this. So I've noticed you know, just different days on my timeline. I can stroll. And I've noticed that certain people consistently are at war with the world every day. Every day, somebody's a hater. Every day, somebody's out to get them. Every day, somebody's fake. Every day, somebody has wronged them, and they're at war. Now, the only common denominator is, you. is the person. So I want to submit for your consideration for those who have everyday problems, everyday situations, everyday battles that you at war every day that perhaps the war is not on the outside. Perhaps the war is in the inside. Perhaps the war is being fought in your heart and perhaps you are not taking the time to do the work to dig out what is toxic there in mm -hmm. your heart. Because anytime you are a victim every day, those wounds are self-inflicted. I'm going to yeah. tell you again. 
That's every it. time you are a victim every day, your wounds are self-inflicted. Nobody is on the battlefield every single day. Nobody. Mm -hmm. And if you are on the battlefield every single day, those battles are battles within that you are projecting out to the world. And uh, and just to add to another thing, your heart shouldn't be heavy every every every. Oh day. my God! Your heart should not be heavy. You can't tell me your heart heavy one day, yeah, and then you you trying to feed me scriptures. Come on now. You need to feed them to yourself. I, I'm trying to tell you. If every week your heart heavy, you are going through something. No wonder, you know, when somebody look at you, they don't see Christ. Mm -hmm. What happens to we have a life and having it more abundantly? I'm mm -hmm. not saying that everything's going to be good. Every day, yeah. But at some point, man, we got to get past the the struggle. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. your life shouldn't just be a struggle every day. Absolutely. Like the, you know, you still waiting for Lord to, for God to do something for you. Yes. No, man, get up and do something yourself, and then yes. he'll meet you there. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, everybody have the same twenty four hours in a day. Mm -hmm. It's just about what do you choose to do with your twenty four. Yep. And, I, and it, it made me think about something. I, I can't remember where it was, but it was like, um, don't sleep too much. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, poverty. If you sleep too much, you have poverty. Mm -hmm. Poverty. Mm -hmm. and, and the Amplified was saying, you're going to be poor. Mm -hmm. Those who sleep much will mm -hmm. be poor. Mm -hmm. But it just reminded me of the situation, man. We got to get out. We got to start making the first move. Yeah. You know, everybody just waiting, you know, I'm waiting for God to bless me. No, you know, go out and start doing some stuff mm -hmm. and God will see your work. Yeah. I'm waiting for God to change my husband. I'm just going to keep praying for him. So, but what are you doing? Let let your light shine. Exactly. Let your heart be transformed. Exactly. And, and then maybe he will see that and say, you know what? I need to change. Yeah. Because you can't be telling me that I need to change. I'm doing this wrong. Yeah. When you ain't showing no Christ-like characteristics mm -mm, at mm -mm, all. Mm -mm. Your heart don't even line up. No. Now, how you going to tell me I need heart surgery and your heart don't even line up? No. Check this out. You got a pacemaker. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's a good one. Absolutely. You got a pacemaker. Yeah. So what a pacemaker look like in, in, in a relationship? A pacemaker is a fake heart. Mm. So you go to church every Sunday playing this mm. Christian. Mm. But when you come home, all hell are breaking loose. Uh-huh. You got a pacemaker. Mm -hmm. You ain't went into heart surgery. Yeah. What you did, you told them, you know, this thing is not working right. Just give me the fake one. Yeah. And it'll pump for me. Yeah. So you go and get your emotional rush at church, and then you come home, and you treat your husband like crap. Yeah. Come on, man. We got to change that. How can you serve in the church, but then don't want to serve at your house? Come on now. How can you serve the pastor at your church, but then want to even serve your husband? Come on now. Come on, man. That's we a gotta... heart check. It's a heart check. That's a heart check. That's a heart because that we, comes from a, 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 a that comes from a place. That's come from a place. You gonna say something? I don't know. You throw me off. I'm oh, sorry. I can't no, don't worry about it. That's my good. beauty. I'm sorry. Yeah, you tend to do that. <laughs> but know that it's so real because I think so many times we want to. Um... Oh, one more other thing, mm -hmm. and another thing, when the church need to be clean, mm -hmm. and I, I'm just going off on a little small tangent, mm -hmm. and pastor said, "Hey, I need y'all to come clean the church." But your husband come in the house and say, hey, can you clean the room? It's a problem. Mm. I mean, I'm just throwing some little things, you know. And this is where a lot of men have an issue and they have church hurt. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. a lot of men struggle mm -hmm. and deal with church hurt. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. they see them see their wives go out and do all this service mm. and do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm not else. saying that you don't supposed to do this, yeah. but it starts within the house. That's right. Your husband... Should be the first person that you serve. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And your 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 husband also also, you know, if we loving our wife as Christ loved the church, mm -hmm. we should be willing to do any and everything and willing to die for our wife. Yeah, yeah. Some men are not doing it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you'll be willing to die for the side chick. Mm. You'll be willing to go out and risk everything mm. for the side chick. Yeah, yeah. And wonder why your wife won't submit to you. Wondering why your wife. Don't give you the respect. Mm -hmm. And then you go out and you say, man, you know, she respect me more than my wife do. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's things we got to change. That's, yeah. that's where the heart surgery really come into play. Absolutely. Now we're talking about real issues. Yeah. Now, let's just say um, just being with somebody that you know you don't want to be with the person. Mm -hmm. You have to have heart surgery. Mm -hmm. And that heart surgery should have took place before you got. In a relationship, before it started getting serious, yeah. you should have checked the heart right there. Yeah. Yeah. But what we do is, 
we put the pacemaker in mm-hmm. and we just roll with it. Yeah. And then 10 years or five years down the line, we like, we don't know what happened. Yeah. I yeah. don't know why I went wrong. You know where you went wrong? Five years when you said I do, you should have said I don't. Yeah. Yep. Heart check. Heart check, yep. That's what we need to have the surgery before all this stuff starts taking place. Mm-hmm. Because, man, once you get a certain age, your heart cannot take certain things. Mm-mm. That's why you see all the people who done got to a certain place. I'm not going to argue with you. Yeah. Come on, Lee, Lee, go ahead. I'm, I'm good. Mm-mm. My heart too fragile for that. It's too fragile mm-hmm. for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so we have to check the heart. Yeah. We got to. We got to let God search heart. our heart. We got to let God search our heart. But once again, once you go for that searching, that means exposure. Yeah. Now, are you willing to deal with the exposure? Because nobody like to be called out about the truth. Nope. I don't care who you is, man. Mm-mm. We we gonna de- be, get on the defensive about it, yeah. but we have to accept what is to come about it. Yeah, we like we like um to be exposed. Oh yeah, that's what it, it was. That's yeah. what it was. We like to be exposed when it is a Beneficial. great reflection yeah. for us. When it makes when it puts us in a positive light, mm-hmm. we like expose me. Yeah, yeah. Like, over here. Woohoo! Put the cameras over here. I'm doing yeah. good. But when we are being exposed for areas that we need to improve upon, for areas that are toxic to us, we want to cover up and hide those people. And it's good that you say that because if you've ever been to an anger uh, anger management class Mm -hmm. or a drug addiction class, Mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that they make you do is you stand up and you have to say your name and say, hey, my name is Tony Martin. I have a drug problem. Mm. So what that does is it exposes you to what the issue is. Yeah. So that's where you have heart surgery. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it gives you a level of accountability. Accountability. Mm-hmm. It forces you yep. to see what your issue is. Yeah. My name is Michael Johnson. I have an anger problem. Yeah. And they ask you just as calm. Hi, Michael. What did you do, Michael? Yeah. Tell everybody what you did. Yeah. And you got to say, oh, I beat my wife. You did, Michael. What made you so angry? Mm. And this person is talking to you so calm. <laughs> the reason why I know this is because I have a friend who I had to go with him. They had to bring a friend. Yeah. And he brought me. Yeah. So I had to see, you know, all these people go around. They like, you know, mm. they have these issues. Yeah. You know, hey, my name is Michael. Mm. I smoke crack. Yeah. So, Michael, what made you smoke crack? Yeah. My friend told me to do it and I did it. Yeah. So you had stupidity. Yeah. You have to expose yourself. Yeah. To everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what God does when mm-hmm. we ask him to search our heart. Mm-hmm. He exposes um, our heart to ourselves. Mm-hmm. So he put it in the mirror and say, okay, look at it. Look now at you yourself. deal with it. Yep. And the only way to get past the problem is to deal with the problem. Is to deal with the face problem. Face to face. You got to have surgery on the problem, guys. You got to have surgery to the, to the point where God can come in, remove that that is toxic in your heart guys to keep moving when you try to bury those things behind your heart within your heart around your heart at the core of your heart it is still there and this is the thing about the heart the heart is fertile ground guys the heart is a fertile place and so anything that you plant into your heart has the potential to grow anything that you plant there has the potential to grow so if you plant hurt you're gonna grow hurt Mm -hmm. if you plant um, hate, you're going to grow, grow hate. If you yep. plant anger, you're going to grow anger. If you plant love, you're going to grow love. So everything that you take and you bury within your heart is going to grow because that's fertile ground. And if you plant lust, you're going to get that lust. You're going to get lust. Yeah. So now you see why everything you look at, it's a lustful thought. Absolutely. Because you done planted so many lustful seeds. Exactly. That now everything, you can't even look, a woman can't even walk by without you lusting over her. Yeah, yeah. And then people will say, well, you know what? I ain't got no lust power. I love my wife. But then all the while, you on social media, oh, hey, me, lady, you looking good today. Ooh, ooh. But I'm just trying to tell you, if I had one like you, on everybody else posts but your wife. Yeah. But you're not lusting. But when God calls you out about your lustful heart, then it's like, okay, wait a minute, God. Like, I ain't, I ain't lusting. I ain't lusting after nobody. Because we don't want to seem like we choose and we don't want to seem like we need it. We don't, don't want to seem like we thirsty, mm-hmm. so they say. But you can have that in your heart yeah. and try to fight it all you want to, but God knows it and it comes out in our behaviors, guys. Even if we don't want to acknowledge it, we don't want to admit, admit it, those things that are planted within our heart comes out. It comes 
out. It comes out in your marriage. It comes out in your relationship. And anytime you're not willing to deal with it head on and you're not willing to have the surgery done to remove that that you have planted within your heart, mm. then you're going to continue to have those same symptoms. Like we're going to continue to have a situation where you continue to cheat or I continue to cheat if we don't deal with the fact that you have an issue controlling your desires. Yeah. If God can't reveal to you and search my heart, oh God, and know my heart, and he can't reveal to you that you have an issue controlling your desires is why you continue to cheat on your wife or your husband. Like that you have an issue with trust is why you checking everything every two seconds, even though they gave you no reason to speculate that they're doing anything. Your lack of trust that you planted in your marriage, you reaping the benefits of that now. Or... You have brought that um, baggage from another Absolutely. But that's all, that's all the baggage is. Mm -hmm. The baggage is the seed that you plant in your marriage. Planet, yeah. Because if I got issues from my past that I have not dealt with, if I have trust issues, if I have hurt issues, if I have insecurities from past relationships that I have not dealt with and I plant them within my heart, they're going to bleed into my marriage. They're going to bleed into my relationship. And what I would do is like, no, this is you. It's, you become the problem. Not me, but if your relationship after relationship, after relationship, after relationship mirrors each other, you have a heart problem. Yeah. If you find yourself dating guys who always cheat on you, you got a heart problem. If you find yourself in abusive relationship after abusive yeah. relationship after abusive relationship, you have a heart problem. And it's not to say that that person doesn't have an issue that they need to work on in their heart, but you have a heart problem because your heart is telling you, seek out this type of person. Seek out this type of relationship. Like, that's mm -hmm. what it comes down to. You are the common denominator. So why am I going to these people who are verbally abusive. Why have the last three guys been verbally abusive to me? Yeah. Is it something in my heart that desires that place with somebody? And that's what we got to get down to. And typically, if we let God truly search our hearts, the very tiny, the tiniest little seed we plant, like the, the mustard seed that you probably can't see for yourself, God goes in with his microscope and he finds that seed. And he yeah, says, hey, good. wait a minute. You know, I, I put my lens on it because, Rachel, I know you can find it within yourself that you have the tendency to be a little hateful at times and that your mouth, like your mouth, yeah, like your mouth is toxic. Like, I know that you don't want to believe that you have no control of your tongue, that you don't guard your thoughts the way you need to. But let me show you right here. This is a problem. And I got to be willing to say, you know what, God? OK, help me, help me, help me address it. Or I can say, you know what, I don't have that problem. And I can continue to have these the symptoms in my marriage, mm -hmm. in my relationship that are destroying it. You either want to get better, you either want to have a better marriage or relationship, or you don't. But it starts with search me, oh God, and know my heart. And know it to reveal it to me. Like show me what's in me that I don't know what's in myself. Like reveal to me what's going on. And when God knows your heart, the word says to know is to see all that is within it, guys. To know is to see all that is within it. That's why we want God to know because God knows all that is within it. We may not, but he does. And so the word also says in Jeremiah 17, but I, Lord, I the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. We got to talk about these secret motives, guys. Because we all got secret motives. These hearts, I tell you, our hearts carry secret mm -hmm. motives. Everybody heart carries secret motives, yeah. guys. Those are what is found when God searches our hearts to know it. He gives us the secret motives. Like, you may be in a relationship, in a marriage, and you got in for the wrong reasons. Now, your spouse might not know. You got in for the wrong reasons. But God knows you got in for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. And when God starts to show you, look, okay, 
You remember? You said, you remember, you got this in your heart right here. You, you chose to marry him because of X, Y, Z. Right? And now you're dealing with A, B, C. And because X, Y, Z is at the core of your heart. Yeah. And the reason why you're in this marriage, it's not going beyond where it is. Because you won't do the work to deal with the way you got into it. If you got into it for the wrong reasons, the marriage is going to be the wrong reasons until you begin to take out the wrong reasons. Until you begin to deal with the wrong reasons, the marriage will always be the wrong reason. Yeah, until true. you begin to accept, God, I got into a marriage that I shouldn't have got into if I looked at the signs when you gave it to me, but I'm in it now. Help me to correct this. Help me to make this better. Help me now that I'm in it to be in it for the right reasons and to transition and change it to be what you need it to be but a lot of times we get in it for the wrong reasons and we in it and we just like i mean it ain't gonna work out I, I don't know what to do <laughs> change your heart that's all you gotta do for one you gotta own up that you got into it for the wrong reasons that your heart wasn't right that you accepted things that you shouldn't have accepted that you got into it from a broken place and now that you got into it from a broken place Fix my heart, God, because when you fix my heart, naturally, it's going to impact my marriage. Mm -hmm. Naturally. Because one thing about it, people can deal with the brokenness of you. But when God restores you, it either does two things. It makes the, it makes the person who was there with you, when you begin to get restored, either they're going to have a desire to be restored as well, or they're going to naturally walk away. Because they can't deal with the restored you. I can only deal with the, the broken, broken you. Yeah, that's true. And if I can only deal with the broken you, and that's the only person I want, then that's what I'm going to be comfortable being married to. But the moment you get restored, and I'm not willing to be restored, typically what's going to happen, somebody's going to leave the marriage. Yeah. But you got to do your work. So you can't be worried about whether or not they're going to be able to take you at your restoration piece. You got to be able to do the work from the broken piece. And that's a lot of times what we don't do in marriage. We fear the restoration because the restoration may lead, may lead to absence from your spouse. The mm. restoration may lead to a separation because now I can't take you at restored. I can take you at broken. And so God is saying, look, this mirror, you at broken. I can get you, I can get you past broken right here. Woo -woo. All you got to do, deal with broken. And we say... Oh, God, yeah, I mean, but if I deal with broken, like, Tony ain't gonna really want to be here. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't know, because Tony broken, I I'm broken, him. and it's just kind of, it kind of works. We kind of work it out in this brokenness. I mean, we, like, argue and stuff, but it's, it's, I mean, we okay? No. And that is why your marriage is broken. That is why your children become broken. That is why your relationships outside of your marriage are broken because every place you feed it from is from a broken, broken place. place yeah. God has the power to fix all brokenness, guys. And to some degree, we all have brokenness within our hearts. They come from our past. They come from present things that happen. They come from um, insecurities we have. They come from upbringings. Childhood. We all have mm -hmm. brokenness somewhere that if we don't allow God to remove it, it becomes a big thing. And it becomes how we move. And only God can change that. Absolutely. And a lot of time I think we get into um, relationships slash mm -hmm. marriages thinking that we can change the person. Mm -hmm. We can, you know, become God. Yep. And, you know, change that person, deliver that person yep. from whatever it is that they have been going through for the last 20, 30 years of their life yep. or something that happened within the childhood, yep. you think you can change that. Mm -hmm. And only God can change that. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, that's what, that's, that's a beautiful thing about search me and know my heart. Search me, God, and know my heart. Like, that should be everybody's prayer, guys. Search me and know my heart. I never want to get to a place that I feel like my heart is intact, that I don't feel like I got to go have a checkup with God because that's all search me, oh God, and know my heart is. It's checkup. It's a checkup time. And when you go for your checkups, sometimes our marriages and our relationships are in such a dire place that God has to take us right from the checkup room to emergency surgery. Like anytime you got to go, from routine checkup to emergency surgery, 
that means something is killing you on the inside. And that's where we put a lot of our marriages. By the time you seek counseling, coaching, go to anybody for help, by the time you talk to somebody, it's dying. It's so <laughs> infected that it's, it's hard to come back from it. That you have a 90% chance of it dying. Like you've got this 10% chance that even with the surgery, you might come out on top and actually live beyond that. We let things get to that place when God is like, look, I'm here. Just open up your heart. Invite me to search it. And I can show you where the illness is be before it takes over your body. Mm. Like I can show you where it's at in your marriage. I can show you where it's at in you before it comes a problem to your husband, before it comes a problem to your kids. I, let, let me show you what you need to work on. Let me search your heart. Let me tell you what's in your heart. Let me show it to you. Let me give you your secret motives. That's what you got to go to God about and that's what you got to do and the thing about it guys like we were talking earlier we all have secret motives and a lot of times people don't want to deal with the secret motives like people don't and secret motives don't mean you have the intent to do something secret things are just things that you you feel like only you know like you know how you go you may be going to work and you love your husband and everything everything cool y'all have your moments mm -hmm. but you at work and this guy he kind of flirt with you mm-hmm and you know, you're like, man, I ain't cheat on my husband. Like, I ain't even checking for dude like that. But you know, you you enjoy the attention. Yep. You flirt a little bit back, but you're like, this a work, this a work guy. I ain't, you know, I don't see him beyond work. It's just a little flirty, flirty. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, that it's that kind of thing. Yeah. What is that in your heart? Because that's a seed, guys. And like we said earlier, the heart is fertile ground. So all it takes is for you and your husband to go through a dry season. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Flirty, still at the job, happy, you know, he there, hey, girl, you looking good today. Why you so down? Like, yeah, work babe, hashtag, yes, that's who he is. And then work babe come, he feeding you, I'm talking feeding you good. And you in a dry place with your husband. So now mm -hmm. he's bringing the water and you thirsty because he at home is dry. So at work, it's like, Running. The water is running. It's going. And because you have already inserted that seed of receptivity from him. I think I made up a word, but you know, you have already opened up your heart to be receptive to the flirtation with this guy. When you go through a dry season, the flirtation is going to get magnified because yeah. now you're starving. So it looks like steak on a plate because I'm starving. So what used to just look like you know, some beef jerky in a pack. Like, I ain't about to eat that. Like, I don't, I mean, it's jerky. Now that I'm starving, that jerky looking like steak. T-bone. And now that I have that secret motive hidden in my heart that I was flirting with, that I was entertaining, now that I'm not getting fed at home, I'm like, let me eat over here. That's how easy things can happen. That's how easy mm -hmm. things can switch over. That's why you got to be careful about what you open your heart up to. That's why you got to be careful about what you entertain. You got to be careful about a lot of things because life changes. And if your heart is in a bad place, it's going to make bad decisions right. at bad times. But if your heart is in a good place, doing bad times is going to make good decisions. That's what's going to happen. And matter of fact, and we just going to go to put a little scripture on it for y'all. It says... A good man brings good things out of the good stored in his heart. But an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of, guys. The mouth speaks what the heart is full of. That's Luke 6.45. So typically what's in your heart pours out of you. Yeah. And it said pours out of the mouth. The mouth is full of what the heart, the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. And so typically when you see people who flirt with everybody and real lustful type of people, your heart full of lust. When you meet people, they real negative, your heart full of negativity. When you meet people and they speak full of positivity and life, that's what they got in their heart. Mm -hmm. When you meet angry, bitter people, that's what they got in their heart. Because out of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's it. What you have stored up is what pours out. And so when you're in your marriage and you're in your relationship and your spouse is spewing out things that are not healthy to your marriage, are not healthy to your relationship, that's a heart condition.
That's a heart problem. And so now you got to go and do some work. And But you can't go and lay them on the table and be like, God, all right, they sit back. They ready for surgery, God. Start with you. Because mm. even though it may not be your direct issue, somewhere within your heart, there's something feeding that. In your spouse. There's something feeding them to a place that it's okay to release this to them. Like perhaps you gave a pass somewhere that said it's okay to cuss me out when you feel like it. Perhaps you gave a pass to say it's okay to treat me how you want to treat me when you want to treat me that way. So you got to go back to your heart and say, you know what? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because understand this and I, and I, and I, I see it every time. You can have somebody that can cuss their spouse out until I light them up, cuss them out at home, but they ain't never got written up at work for cussing nobody out. Hmm. Like you ain't never had a reprimand for cussing nobody out. And you've been at your job <laughs> That's good. That 10 good. years. That was good. 10 years you've been at your job, never cuss nobody out, but you get home and I ask you one question and it's you like can't. all hell break loose. So you don't really have an issue controlling who you unleash with. What you have is you become comfortable unleashing with me. And so although you have a problem, I also have a problem because I've created this environment that says it's okay for you to unleash on me when you get home but control your mouth at work. Hmm. that's where we got to get to. And that's why I always say any issue in your marriage, although it may be somebody's primary issue, it could possibly be your secondary issue. It could still be an issue for you. Your seed may not be that as big as their seed in their heart, but you have a seed somewhere that is feeding and fueling their behavior. That's why you got to yeah, search me, oh God, and know my heart. Tell me what I need to fix. Like, tell me if I need to tell dude, like, look, wait a minute. We're going to treat this like job. We're going to treat this like work. If you want 10 more years of benefits over here, you're going to learn how to control your mouth. Well, the thing is, they don't say that because they don't want to lose the person. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or you don't want to do the work. So, because the work is, perhaps, Rachel, I'm going to take me if I'm in that situation. Perhaps we got to work on some self-esteem with you, some self-value, some self-worth mm -hmm. that I need to address in your heart. Because now you're saying rather than lose what is toxic to me, I'd rather hold on to what is hurtful than search for what is healing. That's, that's what you're saying. So at the root cause of that, you got to make a decision to say, okay, God, am I, can I deal with my stuff? Am mm -hmm. I willing to deal with my stuff at the sake of losing you? And if we trust in God truly in this process and we trust in God's process and we're really seeking and growing and praying to God, God is going to work on you. And if your prayer sincerely is for your marriage to work and for God to work on your spouse and at some level there's God in your marriage, he's going to work on the both of you. Well, it may be a process. Well, I would just think, you know, we're talking about heart surgery mm -hmm. as if it's just a piece of cake. Uh, no. And anytime yes. someone go through surgery... It's always a fear within them yes. that something could happen. I can lose something or something can go ter terribly wrong. Absolutely. And so within a marriage, nobody wants to go to God and have heart surgery because mm -hmm. what if I lose the person that I'm with? Yeah. You know, this is going to be painful. Yeah. Surgery is painful. Mm-hmm. Nobody goes into surgery or come out of surgery and say, oh, that felt so good. Ooh, I, just I mean, it's some good results at yeah. the end yeah. that the toxic or whatever is being removed. Mm -hmm. But nobody goes in surgery and be like, yes, you know what I'm saying? This is going <laughs> to feel good. I mean, I, I, you know, I advise everybody to get surgery. No. Yeah. So we're not making it as if it's going to be good. Mm -mm. It's going to be painful. Yeah. It's going to be some, some recovering. Yeah. And, you know, when you're going through recovery, it requires you to work. Come on when now. you're going through therapy, it requires you to work. Yeah. You're going to have some rehab moments. You're going to have some rehab moments mm -hmm. what, that's going to require you to put in some work. Absolutely. And so nobody wants to go through that process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But everybody wants the end result. Oh, yeah. Everybody wants an awesome marriage. Everybody wants an awesome I ain't marriage. never met nobody who like, I'm about to get married. And I just want it just to go to hell. Like, I want to have a miserable marriage. I just want to be sad every day. I want to be crying. I want to be cheated on. I want to be hurt. I've never met a person. 
that talks mm-hmm. like that about entering into a marriage. Yeah, and so that's if that's something that we don't desire, we got to do the work. You got to be willing mm-hmm. to submit to surgery because we all need surgery. And yeah. there's no true way to be a believer in God and God's ability if you're not going to submit your life, your soul, your heart to God in order for him to guide mm-hmm. you, in order for him to cleanse you, in order for him to make you Christ-like. Because we all carry, like you said earlier, those burdens. Yeah. We like, okay, let me throw this on my shoulder. I mean, it's a little heavy, but I can carry it. I can carry it. And then somebody else come drop their burden. And you like, okay, wait a minute. I'm dragging a little bit. And then if you're in a marriage, you're like, hey, baby, hold this bag. I can't carry it. So you just put it on your back. Right. So now I done gave you my stuff. And now we dragging all this stuff. And then we start picking up stuff along the way. Because once we get into it, we, ne- next thing you know, new behaviors come out. And he mm-hmm. like, baby, hold on. Let's stop at this storage place. Let me get all this hate and unforgiveness out this storage place I had stored up. Let me, let me carry, we're going to carry this too. Yeah. And when you don't have heart check moments, when you don't have heart surgery, when you don't allow God to come in and do the work to reveal to you what we refuse to see in ourselves, then you begin to That's carry right. the weight. Of all of this pain, carried away of all of these things that can make you have a heart attack. It's so yeah, many people that good. are having heart attacks, heart attacks in their marriages, heart attacks in their relationships. In a place that's supposed to feed you and make you healthy, we are dying, guys. Mm-hmm. People are leaving marriages because they feel like they're dying. I don't want to suffer a heart attack in a marriage. Like, I, who want that? I didn't get into something that. Initially, I was joyful about. I was excited about. I was passionate about. So I didn't get into this thinking, I'm going to come out with scars and pains and barely making it. I didn't expect this heart attack. But we go about our marriages and our relationships doing nothing to prevent heart attacks. We do nothing. We take in everything that's wrong. We don't exercise anything that you need to exercise to sustain a healthy marriage. Like marriage conference. We don't read no um, books. No books. We don't read no word. No word. You don't put yourself around anybody with positive marriages. Marriage, uh, marriage couples. Yeah. Your circle is, uh, like, and then we wonder when wow. we get to this point, oh my God, my heart just stopped. Like this is dying. This marriage is over. But before the marriage became to a place that is over, it had already been giving you symptoms that it was sick. Mm-hmm. Cause that's how your body works. Mm-hmm. Anytime something is affecting your body, like any kind of pain, the pain comes first. Yeah. When you start getting sharp pain in your back, that's a warning sign that something is going on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, when you start having headaches every yeah. day, yeah. that's a warning sign that something is wrong. Yeah. If your hand just become numb for no reason, yeah. that's a sign that something is wrong. Yeah. If you start feeling depressed in your marriage, that's a sign that something is wrong. Yeah. You know, because from your wedding day to this day, mm-hmm. something happened. Mm-hmm. Now it's causing the pain mm-hmm. to start to affect you. Yep. Now, if you just start having, uh, what is it, P, P, what? M, uh, post. Oh, PTSD? Yeah. Something is wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, you just shouldn't have that, uh, so much depression on mm-hmm. you from just existing in your marriage. Yeah. What happened to living in your marriage, enjoying your marriage, you know, exploring in your marriage? Mm-hmm. We get to the point where we just exist. Yeah. How your marriage doing, girl? I'm just here. Yeah. Man, I'm, day by going. day. It's going. What? Yeah. Come on, man. We got, we got to change that. Yeah. God says, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I mean, he says life. Life is everything that you are attached to. That is life in your job. That is life in your kids. That is life in your marriage. That is life in your career. That is life in your purpose. God has comes that we may have life and mm-hmm. have it abundantly. He does not come that we may have death. He does not come that we may have destruction. He does not come that we may have despair. He does not come for all of those things. Mm-hmm. But we accept those things because... Because we don't want to do the work. We don't want to be searched. We don't want to be, we don't want that exposure like Ronald talked about. We don't want to be exposed on what we need to work on. And anytime you cover up what needs to be revealed, you carry that baggage. Mm-hmm. You, you take it with you. All you do is feed it. And then you feed it. We feed it, we feed it, we feed it. And some of you guys know what God has already told you. Yeah. Some of you guys know 
that God has told you, I'm not moving your marriage anywhere until until you deal with what I told you is your problem. Until you deal with your anger, I'm not I'm not changing your marriage. Until you deal with the fact that you're trying to play God to your husband or play God to your wife, I'm not changing I'm your not marriage. Moving. Until you deal with the fact that you're very selfish and that if it's not about you, it's not about nothing, I'm not restoring your marriage. Until you love those kids like you say you do, I'm not moving. Because also, there's a scripture that talks about, um, it says, there, that there are those who, their mouths speak. Let me find it. Oh, yeah. I don't want to misquote it, but I want yeah. y'all to get it. Okay. These people honor me with their lips. This is Matthew 15, 8. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. So you talk a good game, but you're not about it. Mm -mm. Like, yeah, you get out here. I love my husband. I just want to save my marriage. But in your heart, you waiting for them to mess up so you can walk away. End it all. Yeah, you, you talk a good game. Like, I want to submit. But at the core of your heart, I ain't submitting to nobody. Like, dude don't even pay the rent on time. Submit to who? You talk a good game and say, yeah, I want a healthy, loving, happy marriage. But you checking everybody else out. And you got that in your heart like, this was the wrong, this was the wrong choice. This was the wrong mm -hmm. thing. You talk a good game, but you don't want to do the work. And God is saying, these people, these people, they honor me with their lips. But their heart. But your heart. I can't even search your heart. You got your heart so far, far on the West Coast and we on the East. But you talk a good game, though. You say you want your marriage, but you don't want to check your heart. Like, it's, it's, it's no way to do that. There's no way to have a search conducted if we're not close to each other. If I'm not in the proximity to reach out and touch you, I cannot search you. And that's what this scripture is saying. So you're saying, God, yeah, I want to be. Like, God, I'm, here I am. I'm a believer. Like, God, I want God to work with me every day. I want to be better. But you never submit to a search with God. Your heart is yeah, never there on the table. You're never there to place your heart to God to say, you know what, God? Possibly there's something in me that is damaging my marriage. But we talk a good game. And when you do that, God is saying, yeah, you go, you go through the, 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 the practice of things. Yeah, you're real religious. But you don't have no relationship. Because relationship is what brings about revelation. Mm. Like, it's not the religion. See, a lot of people get caught up in the word. So you know how to get out here. Like Ronald said, you know how to shout. You know how to raise your hand. You know how to praise God. You know how to write off a prayer. You know how to take your kids to church. You know how to hold your husband's hand in public. You know how to not disrespect him in public. But you get behind closed doors. There's no respect. Mm. There's no covenant. There's no unity. There's no trust. Like, there's none of those things. Because you won't allow God to, hey, search my heart. Tell me who I am. Tell me, God, show me what I need to work on. Instead of me taking this mirror and flipping it to my husband, let me flip it to me. Because at the core of me is a problem. And I don't got time to really worry about his walk. I got to worry about my walk. And if we are truly one, my walk and the improvement of my walk is the improvement of my marriage. I tell mm. people this all the time. The reason we cannot focus on ourselves because we can't see the unity in our marriage. We don't, we don't take that into consideration. We say, if I work on me, then I'm the only one like improving. He just sitting over here and ain't, ain't nothing changed. Like he's just the same. No, 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 no. If your marriage is truly a covenantal marriage, any impact on you is an impact on the union. Like, period. If I become better and my heart becomes better, naturally this becomes better. Naturally it does. But because we don't want to feel like we don't want to be held accountable, we just won't do the work. And we'll say, you know what? Nah, God, until your breath feel like he going to do something too, we just going to sit here in this misery and just live. And God is like, oh, okay. Okay, you, that what you want to do? Okay, I'm going to let you. I'll just sit back 
And when you're ready to come and say, search me, oh God, know my heart, I'm ready to do the search. But until then, you can live in this chaos. Mm -hmm. You can have this fake marriage. Yeah. You can stay here and pretend. You can stay here and desire happiness in your heart. But portray it to the world when it doesn't exist. You can have that. Like, you can have 15 years of misery. But you want to count it all joy because you made it 15 years. You can have that. <laughs> but God is sitting there like, I, I, I can give you so much more. I can give you access to what's beyond this point. I can give you access to marriage on a level you can't even comprehend. A marriage on a level the world wouldn't even be under, able to understand because you guys are submitting your heart to me to search, to purify, to check. You letting me see it all. I'm going to take this microscope and I'm going to show you that little bit of hate you got. I'm going to show you that little bit of insecurity you got. I'm going to show you where you have trust issues. Mm. I'm going to show you where that pride needs to be killed. Yeah, that pride that you think you don't got, that you want to call self-esteem, I'm going to point that's pride. Mm. Mm-hmm. That, that, that whole mentality you have, like, no, nah, I mean, it's feminism. No, nah, that ain't feminism. That's your whole total disregard for your husband. That don't have nothing to do with that. Because a lot of times we'll take what we want to take and make it something else to justify it. But God is like, no, we're going to call a cow a cow. We're not, we're not going to call it nothing else. We're going to call it what it is. You got that in there. I need to take it out. And the only way he can take it out, you first got to let him search it. You got to be willing to submit to the search. You got to be willing to listen. And like we said earlier, God does not search to confirm what you found. Anything that God brings to the table is going to be different than what you found. Because if, if, if I'm bringing it to God and I'm like, search my heart, God, God ain't going to come tell me what I already know. That's not what I need. I already know that. I need you to tell me what I can't see. Mm -hmm. I need to. I need you to tell me what I can't believe about myself. And that you don't want to face. Yeah, yeah. I need you to tell me what I buried so deep because it hurt so much yeah. that it is now choking up my marriage. I need you to show me that because I need to take that at the root because that's a problem for everybody. Like, and some of you guys, you mad because your marriage is dying, but you take everything in your heart and you just wrapping it like a cord around y'all necks like hey boom just deal with deal with this hate okay we're gonna deal with this insecurity i got okay we're gonna deal with these mama issues you got okay we're gonna deal with this infidelity the fact that you can't be faithful we're just gonna take this on and then you start getting choked like you start getting choked and you both start dying because nobody wants to say now, nah, babe, you're going to have to get that machete. We're going to have to cut it. We got to cut this down. We got to cut this down and dig to get it at the root. The only way you uproot things is to dig. The only way you uproot things is to dig. That is what search me God is. Examine, dig deep, look thoroughly, pull out by the root what does not need to be there. Mm. And until you can do that in your marriage, in your relationship, you will not get to experience it at the level that God has it for us to experience. You will not get to go beyond that checkpoint. Yeah. You won't. Because God's like, you're not ready. You're not ready to fly. You're not ready to fly. You don't have what you need. You want to take things that don't need to go on the flight. You're not ready for your marriage to go to the next level. Because you want to take things aboard that has the potential to crash the plane. I'm not letting you do that. Mm -hmm. You want to crash the marriage at this level? Like, no, I'm trying to take you higher, not to crash. I'm trying to take you higher to soar. So if I'm going to take you higher to soar, you're going to have to do some work at this checkpoint. That's some things you got to leave. That's some things you can't take. God is like, hey, I'm TSA. Drop it. You got to let it go. If you want to keep it moving, take it out your heart. You want to be happy? Take it out your heart. You want to be able to communicate? Take it out your heart. Mm. You want to be able to feel love? Take it out your heart. You want to see that commitment? 
Take it out your heart. Until you can do the heart work, until you can do heart surgery, you cannot place a demand on somebody else to go through surgery. You just cannot do it. And you don't have the right to do it. Honestly. So if we take the time to, you know what, God, let me work on me. Let me be, give me the work. Yeah. Take me through surgery. And a lot of times when your spouse sees you willingly going through the surgical process, then they're like, man, they, they actually becoming better. <sighs> they got a lot more peace. They got, they got some joy over there. Like, I don't know. Man, she kind of patient with me. But she's like, fly off the handle. Now everything's just like, okay, babe. I wonder what it is. You start to see that growth. I'm like, babe, what? You know, I noticed a change in you. Like, where did that come from? And you're like, oh, God just been working on me. I really can't explain it. He's just been, you know, removing some stuff. I've been trying to really just work on me. And then your spouse was like, oh, okay. well, I ain't working on that. Maybe I, maybe I should <laughs> possibly work Get some on, work done on me. You know, because the work over there looking good. The restoration over there is looking good. Mm -hmm. And now because you got peace, I got peace. Even if I wasn't trying to create it because you got it. So now you're not bringing chaos with my chaos. I may still bring chaos, but you're bringing peace. So at the point that we clash, we're going to at least have 50% peace. Because when I bring my 100% chaos and you bring your 100% peace, either peace is going to override the chaos or we're going to at least have 50% peace. So you'll begin to see some kind of difference. And when you see some kind of difference, you can begin to move. You can begin to move yeah. in the union. But until you cleanse your heart, until you work on your heart, you're not going to get that marriage you want. You're not going to get that spouse you want. Because God is not going to reward your stubbornness. God is not going to reward your shortcuts. He's not going to do it. What about if you a single black woman feeling undesirable by black men who only want white woman? So... Question is, what about if you are a single black woman feeling undesirable by black men who only want white women? First, I would say that's a seed. And, and, and because our conference is on the power of a thought and where yeah. thoughts come from. Yeah. And we talked about thoughts coming from four places. So thoughts coming from God, thoughts coming from the enemy, thoughts that come from um, yourself. yourself, and thoughts that come from others. So I would say the thought that you have right there, that thought that black men only want white women is a thought from the enemy and possibly a thought fed by somebody else. And so what you or whoever has probably begun to do is you have now taken this seed, this seed of belief, planted it into this fertile heart that has now built up a tree with strong roots that is saying, hey, look, they're not checking for you. Yeah, they don't want you. Don't you know that Black women, black men don't desire white women. They don't want you, girl. You waited for what? You ne they never gonna find you. But see, what we accept and what we plant in our heart is what grows. So now you gotta uproot that thought. You gotta uproot that seed. That that's yeah. the heart surgery that has to be done because now that thought is somewhere planted in your heart and it's being fed and mm -hmm. it's being fed by whatever insecurities you already have. And every time you encounter somebody else, because the enemy also knows how to build your insecurity, so he's like, okay, you 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 already thinking these guys they only want to date white women. I'm gonna keep making you encounter these type of guys. So so it can it can mm -hmm. validate. This toxic thought that you already have. You got to challenge that. You got to uproot that. And you got to have a relationship. Let's go back to the relationship with God. And you got to get to a place that God, I know that whatever is for me is for me. If my desire is to have a God-fearing man that's going to love me for me, like prepare me. Because what is probably happening now and why that person probably has not been presented. Because if God was to give it to you in the broken place, you're going to break it. And God is like, I'm not going to give it to you. I'm not going to give you a beautiful marriage to destroy because you're broken. I'm going to restore you because that's what has to happen first. I'm going to restore you. And then when I restore you, I'm going to bring you somebody restored. And so when you move, you're moving in restoration together. You're not moving and dragging somebody who broken. 
And then next thing you know, I'm a little shattered. I'm a little cracked. Like, no, because when you have to hold on to broken things, you get cuts and bruises. Carry around some broken glass. Yeah. You're you going to get cut. cuts and bruises. But if you carry around a glass vase that's perfect, that's restored, that's healthy, that has no cracks, no crevices, nothing, that is not damaged, it's like carrying around a jewel. It does not hurt you. It does not harm you. And that's really probably what God wants you to get. I need to work on you. I don't need you worried about what somebody else thinks. I don't need you worrying about who going to be out there, who they checking for. Mm. Cause right now I need to be your, I need to be what you checking for. I need to be your attention. I need to be what you seek. I need to be what you want, what you desire, what you need. And when I'm what you desire, what you need, I'm going to give you what I know you need beyond what you think you need. See, a lot of times we want God to give us what we think we need. And then God is like, I'm not giving you what you think you need. I'm going to give you what I know you need. And what we, what he knows we need is always, 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 always better than what we think we need. Like, I didn't think I needed my husband. Like, we were friends dating and we were cool and it was all good. I didn't think that I needed somebody like him. But my God, I needed somebody like him. Mm -hmm. She didn't need the other losers she was with. <laughs> I did not need the other losers I was with, guys. I didn't. No, but in all honesty, because yeah. we can't see sometimes beyond what we desire. And sometimes our desires are so jaded because they're coming from a bad place. They're coming from a broken place in us. So if I'm at a broken place, my desires are going to be broken. And that's why God doesn't give us all the time the desires of our heart. And that's why also it's like you said, you can't go off of that. Follow your heart. You want me to follow my heart to hell? Like, because following mm -hmm. your heart sometimes can have you following your heart to a job you were never supposed to have, so you end up miserable. It can have you following your heart to a relationship you were never supposed to experience, so you end up miserable. It can have you following your heart to have a child with somebody, and now your co-parenting experience is hell. You cannot follow your heart to hell. You have to be willing to submit your heart, let God search it, Cleanse it, purify it, and you yeah. got to follow God. They say the steps of a good man are ordered. Like, they are ordered. Mm -hmm. And it's not gender-based. It's male or female. Your steps as a believer are ordered. And so when your steps are ordered, anywhere I walk, I'm walking behind God. So every, pe every step that I take, God is leading the way. Yeah, so okay. even when I fall and I stumble off track, God like, hey, Rachel... Right here, I got your steps. Just follow this path, get back on track. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times we want to say, you know what, God? Nah, this is the long way. Like, this is the long way, God. I'm going to take this shortcut. See, I'm going to meet you around the back. So I'm going to take this shortcut. I'm going to go down, you know, this street. I'm going to make this left. And we're going to meet up. Right? We're going to meet up in the same I'm gonna place. i meet you back down here. Yeah. And God is like, no, no, but your, your steps. I got you right here. There's, there's some things you can't see. Yes, yeah. I'm trying to take you down this path. So do God be like, be humble, sit down? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just asking. asking for a friend. That's it. Yes, yes. And because a lot of times we can't see the disaster that mm -hmm. is awaiting us on the shortcut that we have now taken and God who is all knowing, all seeing already has seen what mm -hmm. is there and he's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, look, look. Before you go down there now, you're going to have a collision. So although this is the long route, this is the safe route. And although this is the long route, I'm taking you down this walk because I need you to shed some of this weight that you're carrying. Because if you take the shortcut with this weight that you're carrying, when you get to the destination, got it. it's going to break everything you have. Because I haven't designed the destination to hold this weight that you want to carry with you. So we got to take this long journey to shed the weight. And we don't want to share the weight because sharing the weight takes work. Like it takes work to admit that you insecure, that you got low self-esteem, that somewhere along the way, somebody has broken you to a degree that you have now taken ownership of that brokenness and accepted that word that was spoken over your life. You have now embraced it. It takes a lot to get to the point that God, look, take that away from me. Like teach me who I am again because I have lost myself in life. I have lost myself in others' opinions, others' ideas of me. 
others' hurts, others' pains, the relationships that I've had. I have lost who I am. Restore me. The restoration process, guys, it is hard. It is not easy. I don't want you to think that you can go over here and say, search me, oh God, know my heart, and tomorrow it's like cleanse. It's, it, you out of mm -hmm. surgery, and there's no, there's no aftermath. There's no recovery phase. Like Ronald said, nobody comes out of surgery like, whoo, boy, I'm good. Let me jump up out this bed. Where we going? Nobody does that. When you go through surgery, it's a slow process it's a recovery, back. recovery, yeah. It's a recovery and sometimes process. Sometimes you had to go through therapy. Yeah, and sometimes you, you have setbacks. Yeah, setbacks. Yeah. Like sometimes you have setbacks. I literally think about when I had. I think it was our second son, and um, we had our second son, and um, you know I was feeling good three weeks in. I'm like, all right, let me move. Let me let me do a little bit more around the house. I was feeling better. Everything got myself on this tie. Just thought I was good after coming out of having a baby three weeks. Had a setback. Caught a fever. Had an infection, had to go back to the hospital because I had a setback. Because I tried to move too fast out of the process, out of this surgical process I just came out of. I tried to move too fast. Mm -hmm. And I didn't allow for that recovery process to happen. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know how to just be still in that moment. And sometimes when God takes us through surgery, we want to be perfected already, that we jumping back out there, that we like, God, fix my heart, help my insecurities, make me a better person. Boom. We go through surgery. We jump out. We like, I'm in the next relationship. And God is like, what? wait, wait, wait a minute. No healing process. You, you back in love? No time off. In five days? Instead of just sitting and saying, you know what? God, yeah, let me just recover. Let me just, let me just find peace in this recovery moment so I don't mm -hmm. have a setback. Yeah. You know, help me, because although I had surgery, help me rehab the places that I need to strengthen. Help me strengthen what I need to strengthen. Because when you go to surgery for your leg,